My next guest, Tom Wilde, the chief executive of RAMP, is looking at perhaps the most technologically underserved element of the emerging video market, which is how do we find the videos that we want and make them useful to us. So, Tom, welcome. Thanks, Jason. Good Perhaps here. you could begin by saying exactly what RAMP does, and I think that would be useful. Sure. Yeah, so we, we actually, our origins are a government research contractor up in Boston called BBN that had developed uh, speech recognition and search technologies to index uh, broadcast television around the world. Uh, and we spun out of there with that intellectual property, uh, and we turned it into a product called Media Cloud. And Media Cloud enables uh, broadcasters and, and publishers of any kind that, that want to produce video um, to create rich metadata around every video asset they produce. So it comes into Media Cloud. We use speech recognition to build time-coded transcripts, time-coded tags, uh, 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 scene manifests using thumbnailing. Uh, and so you get this rich, almost barcode of metadata around every single video that you produce. Why is search so difficult with video? Yep, and it, it's funny, when we, we started the company, you know, when it originally spun out, um, the video search problem looked like a really fascinating problem to tackle, and this is you know, five, six years ago, mm -hmm. uh, because the amount of video flowing onto the web was going to be massive. You have this sort of infinite uh, shelf space concept on the web, and so anytime you have a massive content, you have a search problem. Uh, the challenge with video is video is a, is a dense, opaque content format. It doesn't present itself as a text object, and the web still very much runs on text. Mm -hmm. URLs are text, um, Google crawls and indexes text, and so without text, all of that content is sort of left out of the mainstream of the web where people link to things, you know, like things, um, and, and uh, uh, can share content objects. And, and video is at a disadvantage there, you know, natively. Couldn't you do a text-to-speech uh, for uh, all the text, or, or speech-to-text, forgive me, right. of all the uh, speech in a video, and then use that unstructured data as a mechanism to to search, why wouldn't that work? So that's precisely what we do. Yeah, yeah. so in, in the challenge is that most videos don't come with transcripts. Mm -hmm. Even in the broadcast world where uh, many uh, broadcast programs are closed captioned by law, when those uh, video assets move onto the web, typically that caption file gets broken or lost or disassociated with the object. And so um, that's precisely the approach. How do you create a body of text and metadata to make that video behave like a text object? Uh, in many ways, you know, videos are the new documents, and Vijay was just talking about that a minute ago, saying that you know, traditionally you had a video complement an article, and now you're seeing this, this shift all the way to the point where, well, they're not even writing articles anymore. It's just a video production, right, this, this video newscast. So we've just been discussing a, a good hack, as we would say at MIT, for making video searchable. But that only works if you know what you're looking for. That's a very different thing from discovery. I might have a fairly incohate desire. Show me all the training videos about making my sales staff do better customer service. Right. Show me how, as a manager, how I can provide better negative criticism in a way that's you know, non-depressing for my staff. And that, those are pretty vague ideas. So how would discovery-based search work on the, in the video world? Yeah, and that's sort of the, the exciting uh, sort of phase two of online video that we're just starting now. So, you know, phase one was really all about how do I produce um, digital video first, and second, how do I deliver it? Really the, the sort of bits and bytes problem. And you saw companies like Brightcove and Uyali and th those sorts of companies start up um, really around this, the challenge of how do I get the you know, bits and bytes from A to B. That's sort of solved now. And so the next uh, big question is sort of what you're touching on, which is, how do I make that video contextual to something else, right? How do I present it in context um, with, you know, with a, a text object, with an article? How do I relate two videos together, even though the user hasn't necessarily uh, explicitly expressed that? How do I create you know, video training materials that automatically know to reference the, the printed manuals that go with that? Um, and so uh, that's what's really exciting about how to approach this problem of of wrapping videos with a lot more context and plugging them into the uh, existing technologies and new technologies to do those sorts of things. Can you make them more specific uh, for me? So show me the kinds of things that I, I might be able to do if I could contextualize a video with another video, mm -hmm. uh, a text, another article. Well, a really uh, great example right now in the market is augmented television or second screen television. 
so again, the, the first phase of, of the second screen problem was, was highly technical. It was things like automated content recognition. What am I watching on the big screen right now? But we're now into the sort of second phase of that, which is I want to augment what's being broadcast with some other stuff, right? Photos, slideshows, articles, e-commerce opportunities. Um, but I can't do that very easily unless I know a lot about what's going on inside this video right now. Not just about the, the program, not just the title of the program and when it's on, but right now on the frame, what, who's in that frame? What are they doing? What's the context of this particular broadcast? How can I associate that with all this other rich content that might go with that, whether it's a movie or a newscast um, or a sporting event, right? So a player's on the screen or a player's just done something interesting. How do I bring in this whole payload of related information at that moment to deliver either you know, on screen through things like a smart television or down to the second screen, a tablet you know, that's sitting on your lap while you're watching television? So that's a, a great use case. And who pays for this, I suppose? So is the, this seems like a highly valuable set of services. Is the payment of this pushed down to the level of the end user? Are these services that are offered by the companies a mixture of the two? Well, I think what we're seeing right now is that uh, the goal that most video producers, be they broadcasters or print publishers, how do you make video more valuable? Mm. Right, so we're, as I said, we're, we're through this phase of how do I actually get it to the end user? Now my question is, I produce all of this, it's largely a sunk cost exercise, um, the production costs, all of that. So now how do I make it more valuable? Because the web has this infinite shelf space, um, I can continue to reap you know, value and rewards and perhaps you know, advertising revenue or subscriptions for a long time from this video asset if I can make it discoverable, if I can engage the user with it, if I can relate other kinds of content to it. Does social media play an important part in this? So we've been talking about different types of discovery, different types of search. Facebook recently announced its new social graph search. Will that be an element of the way people discover and explore video in the future? Yeah, to us it's, it's just another payload of metadata that goes with the video object, right? You have, each video will have its own you know, social graph in terms of who watched it, who liked it, who shared it. Um, and, and that allows you to sort of continue to you know, uh, bridge it to other types of content that people liked and shared and so forth. So you know, the way PageRank originally with Google was a, a sort of a link voting mechanism, you now have sort of these social voting mechanisms. All of those things are, are data that, that can be attached to a video asset to help make it more valuable ultimately. So one final question before I go on. I have been hearing about making video searchable in this way for a while. Um, some years ago, a, uh, a spin-off from Autonomy called Blinks uh, said they were going to uh, produce this kind of text-based search for video. It's clearly technically extremely challenging. Who would you say your remaining competitors are? Yeah, I think that's right. The, this isn't technology that two guys in a garage can make. You know, the, the U.S. government spent about $100 million in about 20 years on this particular body of IP that we have um, via this, uh, this research contractor. So it's, it's very complex technology. So there's a few competitors out there. You know, clearly Google um, has the technical chops to build speech technology, and they have. You know, so they have a body of technology. Um, Microsoft has a body of technology. Um, Nuance is, is uh, sort of the 200-pound uh, gorilla in the speech space, um, although they're more on the speech recognition space. They power Siri and, and some of those sort of speech interface devices. We squarely um, face the content producer and, and really help, help them make their content more valuable.